Hey guys, it's Paul. I got a bunch of stuff that showed up this week for the FP5 build. Let me show it to you. Welcome to Where Nerdy is Cool. Hey guys, it's Paul, and let me show you some of the cool stuff that showed up. First up is from printedsolid.com, and uh, let me move this in front of camera number two here. They have a nice bundle going on for the E3D Titan and for the E3D V6. Uh, the, the, the uh, Titan being the extruder and then the E3D V6 being the, uh, the nozzle and the... Uh, I also went with a couple extra of the silicone uh, booties here. Don't know how useful they're going to be, but I figured why not. And uh, the other thing I picked up, since we're talking about printed solid, is uh, I decided to get some more filament. And uh, since I'm going to be using uh, 1.75 millimeter filament in the FT5, I decided to go with orange for the, uh, well, I kind of, I'm very fond of the orange. This is the Dutch orange and uh, it prints beautifully. I've had really good luck with color fab, so uh, I figured uh, if we're going to start an FT5 build, well, let's christen it with the good stuff. A little more expensive than the uh, regular filament out there, but again, I've had really good luck with their stuff. Next up is I got a delivery from IGUS and uh, there's been some conversations on the uh, Facebook group uh, about how to best manage the, uh, the wiring in the uh, printer. And uh, a couple of the folks had uh, a good thread going on about the IGUS uh, Chainflex uh, cable series. And uh, this stuff has uh, 18 wires inside of it. And uh, what this will do is, uh, well first of all it's shielded. And uh, this stuff isn't terribly expensive. We're talking four or five dollars per foot. Uh, I went with eight feet. I figure have too much than too little. And uh, what this should do, the biggest thing is offer a cleaner setup. So rather than having all these individual wires dangling everywhere, uh, a majority of those wires can be replaced by uh, what's in the IGUS. Uh, the exception being, of course, the wiring for the print head because that's going to draw uh, more power than these uh, thin wires can handle. But uh, uh, this stuff was great. If you're interested in the model number that I got, it's uh, CF240-03-18. Uh, and uh, again, you know, you're talking five or six bucks a foot, and uh, it's for me, I'm just looking forward to having a very clean setup. The next arrival was from 713maker.com, and uh, these guys make some beautiful aluminum parts for the FT5. And uh, let me just, uh, I mean, look at this stuff. I mean, it's beautiful, it's shiny, they've included the instructions, they've got all the mounting hardware that goes with it. Who does that? That's fantastic. And on top of that, uh, they had noticed, and uh, I, I had contacted them and they already knew, but uh, uh, the kit that I have has a newer chain which has a different number of connectors that attaches to the gantry, and uh, what they included at no additional charge was uh, to replace the pieces uh, that were affected by that uh, change, and uh, as you can see, one's to the extruder, one's to the gantry. And uh, these pieces weren't terribly expensive. Uh, I mean, the, the vacuum seal, they include everything. I can tell you from being an R2 builder for a long time, I know that when you're dealing with CNC and aluminum and machining and stuff, that can be very expensive stuff. These guys made it very affordable. They're 713maker.com on their Facebook page and, uh, and check them out. They, they got some really nice stuff. And finally, the last thing I did, now hopefully you guys will credit me with some arts and crafts awards here because I decided, well first of all, I had already mentioned I'm not going to use the pressure board melmanite pieces. But what I did is I bought aluminum pieces. I paid a little bit more. I bought them from Adafruit. They're just the 2020 middle and, uh, and corner brackets. Uh, L and T brackets is what they're really called. And as you can see, what I did is I painted mine. I'm kind of fond of orange because this printer is going to print BB-8. So I thought, let's stick with BB-8 orange. And let me tell you, I'm up here in Maine. And if you don't know where Maine is, that's well north of Boston. So those of you that are geographically challenged know that I'm, I'm up on the north. And uh, unfortunately, painting in the uh, cold weather can be difficult. I would go outside, I'd blast my paint, and then bring them back inside. And then when they dry, to uh, you know, repeat the process and go uh, back outside. And unfortunately, in my zeal to paint these, uh, I didn't realize that the newspaper was sticking to the back of them. So uh, you can kind of guess uh, <clears throat> which side is going to face the printer. But anyway, hey, I mean, this printer is going to look pretty sweet when it's all done. So that's my progress so far. I'm waiting for the, uh, the pancake motor, which is going to go to the uh, extruder. And really, that's the only other part I'm waiting for. There's also a lot of pieces that I'm in the CNC out of aluminum. Uh, a couple of my friends have come up with some uh, aluminum versions of their own. Uh, drawings rather of uh, the 
pieces we want to replace that are uh, included in Melmanite right now. And uh, I'm going to try those out in wood first. I want to make sure that I have proper clearance for the, uh, for the rods. And uh, if those test out and come out all right, then we'll crank them out in aluminum. So th that'll be something uh, neat to show you here in the next couple, uh, maybe a week or two. But anyway, uh, that's my progress to date. And uh, I thank you for tuning in. And remember, this is where nerdy is cool.